everyone, and welcome once again to The View from the Midwest. It's time for another St. Louis FC post-match edition as we discuss the game that just happened between St. Louis FC and the big rival Louisville City FC. And unfortunately for St. Louis fans, the rival got the best of St. Louis FC by a final score of 2-0. to nil. Uh, St. Louis FC overall, I felt, didn't play a bad game. But they weren't on top of their game either. The, uh, if you listened to the announcers, which I'm actually going to kind of discuss them here in a little minute. Uh, but if you listened to them about the first half, uh, you would think that Louisville FC just absolutely, or Louisville City, I should say, just absolutely dominated. And they did have the better of the play, but... It was nil-nil going into the half, and really Louisville City didn't really do a whole lot until the very end of the first half, uh, in which they, they got a shot off from the, the left-hand side, kind of towards the middle, and forcing Mark Pace to make a very good save going down to his right. But other than that, it was a fairly even game overall. Louisville FC, or Louisville City, I'm just going to call them Louisville. Louisville did have the better of the play overall, but it wasn't like they were creating a whole lot, and neither did St. Louis either. It was a little bit disappointing in terms of the attack from St. Louis, uh, simply because they've had some uh, great games here in the past few games, uh, creating offensive chances, and for whatever reason, they, they went on the road, and that just didn't necessarily go with them. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of a, a different dynamic now with St. Louis FC, because last season, they struggled a lot uh, at home. They couldn't score many goals at home. Uh, they didn't necessarily have their best performances at home, but they were doing very well on the road. Well, except for some of the games at the very beginning of the season, uh, now all of a sudden it seems to be kind of flipped on its head. St. Louis FC is performing very well at home. Uh, they, they did get the nil-nil draw, which, while a disappointing result, was still a pretty decent uh, game overall in terms of how it was played in the first home game. Second home game, uh, second official actually played home game, not counting the rain out against Vancouver. Uh, was a, a three three goals for St. Louis FC, and, and that was a pretty darn good offensive performance coming out of the hometown team. Uh, and then all of a sudden you go to Louisville, and Louisville's a very good team, taking nothing away from them. They're on top of the Eastern Conference now. They have 20 points on the season, so they're obviously rolling through the Eastern Conference. But for whatever reason, maybe it's because it's a rivalry game. They don't necessarily show that dominance when it comes to playing against St. Louis FC. Uh, it really both goals that St. Louis FC conceded, uh, while nicely finished off by Louisville, were mistakes that St. Louis made. And if you clean those up, then you have a, a chance for a nil-nil draw on the road, which would be an incredible result considering the standings of uh, Louisville right now in the Eastern Conference. But St. Louis FC, as has been their way over the course of their history, uh, just seem to have that occasional defensive breakdown that really ends up costing them, and that's what kind of happened in this game. Uh, the first goal was kind of a defensive miscue where it seemed like you had about three guys kind of trying to surround the ball, and all of a sudden it popped loose over towards the outside, and Pace didn't really have any kind of chance at saving that as it was just chipped over and around him. So it was a, a, a fantastic finish, but quite frankly it should never have gotten to that point point because it just seemed like there were too many people trying to surround the ball leaving somebody open on the flank over on the wing and giving Louisville uh, the chance to go up. Uh, the second goal again was kind of a defensive miscue uh, uh, and somehow the ball gets played through uh, and and then kind of a questionable penalty kick call. Uh, I won't say that it was really questionable but on first viewing it just didn't look like a penalty kick and being a goalkeeper myself I'm never necessarily going to say yes that was for sure a penalty kick because Mark Pace seemed to get there, seemed to get a piece of the ball and then all of a sudden the player went and tumbling over, but we also never got a good look at the replay for those of us who were watching on YouTube, uh, so we never really got to see what was called, and my other uh, 
consternation in terms of the call was the the the, the camera was a bit slow in following the ball, so they they had a decent chunk there showing uh, behind the play, and the referee was nowhere to be seen. So that means that he's a good 20 yards away. And as an official myself as well, it just seems like it wasn't necessarily good positioning by the lead official in terms of being able to make a call like that. Now, perhaps he got some word from one of his assistants uh, that, that something happened, and then you get a different viewpoint from over on the sideline. But just everything kind of mixing together, it didn't seem like something that necessarily should have been called a penalty kick, but I, I would like to believe that the official saw something from his point of view that made it look like a penalty kick. Taking that completely out of the equation, St. Louis FC just really didn't necessarily play well enough to get a result out of this one, so credit goes goes out to Louisville for that, uh, but it's also a little bit disappointing for St. Louis FC that they, they just didn't seem to be able to string together a whole lot to try to create. They seem to be trying to go over the top too much, not much work through the midfield for the most part. Now, obviously, over the course of the game, you're going to have passes through the midfield. You're going to have strung together passes, but just as an overall piece, it didn't seem like St. Louis FC was on that cohesive uh, plane that they've been on here. Here recently, and that was a little bit disappointing to see. But it's on the road. It's against a very good team, top of the team in the East, uh, and it, it's a it's a result that probably was fair given how everything had turned out. Obviously, St. Louis FC fans are a bit disappointed because you don't come out with any points, and now Louisville has uh, two goals up on the board in terms of trying to win the Kings Cup. Last little note. Uh, again, I, I, I try not to make these things about me, but I, I am a, a freelance play-by-play -play guy trying to get full-time into the business, uh, so I kind of try to do some of these videos to keep uh, things a little sharper and whatnot. And I, I don't know who's on the St. Louis broadcast this year, uh, but given how it's gone in the past, they've done a pretty good job overall. I still don't necessarily think it sounds like a soccer broadcast, but they, they do an okay job. Everybody else in the league is just terrible. I mean, I'm sorry. The, uh, apparently, the guy that was doing it for Louisville is uh, the sportscaster for one of the stations in Louisville. And I'm sure he does a good job at that. But he was awful as a soccer announcer. They, him and uh, Bob Valvano, who's an excellent radio host... They were just terrible. Number one, they were mumbling half the time. I don't know if that has to do with the microphones or, or uh, just the way that they were speaking, but they were talking about like market size and, and TV ratings and all this kind of stuff, and then all of a sudden it'd be like, oh, there's a shot. It's like, no, the, the game itself, I don't care if it's a TV broadcast or not, because in TV you are allowed to kind of uh, stray away from things that are actually going on in the action a little bit more, but you're still supposed to put your majority of the focus on the broadcast itself, and it was quite frankly like almost like listening to one of their radio shows, and then oh, by the way, there's a soccer game going on. Oh, okay, we're going to go back to talking about what we were. And they they didn't seem to make any kind of effort to really say who was in control of the ball and where they were on the field. And again, you're not necessarily putting together a radio broadcast, but you're still supposed to give some sort of picture of what's going on for those people who look away from the screen every now and then. Because if you didn't have your eyes glued to the action every single second, you wouldn't have a clue what was going on in the game due to the fact that they basically weren't talking about the game. And there, there's so many announcers out there that are just boring and they don't know how to broadcast soccer and this and that. And it's very frustrating. It's frustrating for everybody. Everybody in the chat room, including the Louisville City fans, don't like like the people who are broadcasting their games. But it's especially frustrating for somebody like me because I'm having such difficulty getting into the business. Now, some of that does have to do with my personality. I'm a bit of an introvert, but taking that out of it, I do believe that I'm a good broadcaster, and yet I find all these people out there who have jobs, whether they're full-time or whether they're just working seasonal per game, whatever, it doesn't matter. But they have, they are getting 
something out of this and I can't seem to get a foot in the door so it's very frustrating but even taking myself out of it even as just a fan it's not what I want to hear in terms of production value uh, and broadcasting value on any kind of game and it's very disappointing and maybe that's going to change next year when the USL kind of takes a little bit more in charge of each broadcast uh, but they have also said that they're going to kind of still let the teams run their e their own thing they're just going to try to make it a more cohesive cohesive uh, uh, production value across the board. So I don't think necessarily the announcers themselves are going to change that much. And that's disappointing because we all understand that basically the way that U.S. soccer works in its tiers, this is technically the third level. But you're trying to put on a professional broadcast. You're trying to give fans something that is at least valued at what they consider their team. So if somebody is a diehard fan of their team, you don't want somebody broadcasting it that's like, oh, well, I do a little bit of dabbling here and there broadcasting. Oh, yeah, sure, I can do soccer, whatever. It's like, go out and try to find people who actually know the game at least a little bit because I think that would help quite a bit. People who have studied the names, people who are actually know something about the teams themselves. But that's neither here nor there. Overall, St. Louis... Uh, a bit of a disappointing result. They're stuck on uh, 11 points now as I look at the standings. Uh, these are not live as I uh, look at them, uh, but it is going to be one of those things that um, if I do the math right, everything will kind of work out. Louisville City FC improves to 6-1-2, and two, so they have 20 points on the season. Don't care too much about them. Uh, St. Louis FC out west, starting to fall behind the pack a little bit right now. They're stuck on the 11 points. They are 3-3-2. Three, three, and two. So they're starting to fall behind the leaders right now. LA Galaxy 2 still top of the pack. Uh, I don't believe they have played yet, although I think they're going to play either tonight or tomorrow. They have 16 points as of uh, recording this video, and uh, Colorado Springs also has 15 points. Vancouver FC 2, who we will see in a couple weeks again. Remember, that game is on uh, May 25th. That's going to be a Wednesday matchup, so that one will be the makeup of the rainout. So make sure that you uh, all have your tickets. If you were intended to go to that game, go ahead and go out to that game because basically it won't cost you anything. So how can you beat that? So St. Louis FC still had some more points to try to pick up as they drop a few against their rival here tonight. Disappointing result overall. Uh, those of us who watched it were almost put to sleep by some broadcasters who sounded like they were better suited to a golf broadcast. But hey, those kind of things happen. Until the next time, though, uh, once again, St. Louis FC falls to Louisville City FC by the score of 2 to nothing. but there's plenty of chances to get them the next time. Coming up, we've got the USL, um, uh, U.S. Open Cup, I should say, coming up on May 18th. That'll be a home game, and it's against uh, a team from Cleveland, so make sure you go out there and support the team for that. But until the next time, I'll see you then.